happy Saturday. So I'm here to share with you Saturday's focus. Pastor Dave has given us the verse today um, from 1 John. So head over to 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 11. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. It says, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love God does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. So I'm going to take this first little chunk here um, at the beginning. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. So this is saying all of you who are children of God, all of us who are children of God, we have the capability to love. God has given us that capability to love. Next, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, not that God not that we loved God, but that God loved us, that he sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. So this is saying like God has proven that. If you guys are sitting there wondering, does God love me? Does God see me? Does he know me? Yeah, he does. We celebrated that last Sunday as the resurrection of Easter. It was awesome. We know that. We have that proof that God loves us so much. God loves you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for you so that while you were still a sinner, he covered that for you and secured eternal life for you. So we have that proof. We have that proof. And it's not about how much we love God. It's about how much he loved us that he was willing to make that sacrifice even though we don't deserve it. And so I don't know about you, but I have, I have this feeling deep and rich running through my blood all the time that I am just not good enough, that I'm not worthy. But the word constantly reminds me that it's not about that. So here, here it says, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. It's not about the fact that I'm not good enough for God. I'm not. I will never, ever be. It's about that he loves me, even though. And so for me, like I said, that runs so thick and rich in my blood, though, that I want to love him back. He loves me so much and so well. I want to love God back. And how do I do that? I want to do, I want to do what he asks of me. How do I love him enough to show the thankfulness that I feel? And so I think about God's word. I'm going to switch Bibles here for a minute. And go over to John chapter 13, starting in verse 34. So this is Jesus talking. He says, I give you a new command. Love one another, just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. See, I feel this intense sense of belonging to God. 
He is mine and I am his because he loves me so much and has saved me from myself. So I want to love him back. And Jesus is telling me how to do that. He's saying, if you love me, then love other people like I have loved you. He says it several times. He, he goes and tells Peter, Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. He's saying, if you love me, love people. And he shows it consistently throughout his life here. That Jesus loved people no matter what. And so if I think about, well, how do I thank God and show him how much I love him back? He tells me right here, if you love me, love other people and love them like I love you. And so how does God love us? Well, he loves us unconditionally. He loves us no matter what. He loves us all the time and he loves us unchanging. That's a tall order for how to love other people, but that's what he's saying. We need to love other people no matter what. Not just when they're nice to us. Not just when they're all showered and fresh and clean. No, we need to love them when they reject us. We need to love them even if they hurt us. Hmm. Guys, we need to love other people even when it's hard to do that because our world is experiencing a pandemic. We need to love other people even when society is telling us we can't leave our houses. Huh. So I want to go back and finish this up. This last little piece here in verse 11. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. God loves us not with a contingency. Only if you're good, then I will love you. No. Only if things work out this way, then I will love you. No. God knows what you did in years before. He knows who you were last week. He knows who you were yesterday. He knows who you were this morning. And he loves you anyway. He loves me anyway. So we surely ought to love other people. If he could do that for us. Hmm. There are two words that stand out to me in this little piece. The very first sentence up here in verse seven, continue. Dear friends, let us continue to love one another. And then one of the last words here in verse 11, we surely ought to love each other. We surely ought to continue loving each other. So I know, I know things are weird. And for some of us, they're just weird, that's it. For others, they're really scary. For others, they're really sad. For all of us, it's uncontrollable. We have no control over what's going on. But for all of us alike, God has extended his love for us. And so we surely ought to continue loving others, even in this, maybe more so in this. What's happening is bad, right? but I'm reminded of a verse in Genesis. Have you go to Genesis chapter 50, verse 20. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. Guys, God loves you. God sees you. God has saved you, and we celebrated that last week. Now let's not let 
all of this that's going on be used for harm? Because I believe God is intending this for good. God can use this, he can use this for good for the saving of many lives. There are some really cool things I'm watching happen through this. And I believe it's in this spirit of loving other people. And so we're getting creative, right? We're getting, getting creative in the way that we can love others. Handwritten letters are going back out. That's so fun to go to the mailbox and get a letter by some, written by someone known that they took the time to sit down to write to you and love you. People are doing all kinds of really nice things for other people. And one of the coolest things that I've seen people do, and we got to participate in last week, was a parade birthday party. So we can't get together with people. We can't go and hang out with people and give them hugs and give them our gifts. But people are getting creative in the way that they're showing love. So all these cars lined up and dressed their car up with streamers and balloons and people made signs and, and they drove by slowly and hung out the window and said, we love you, happy birthday. And while it looks different than what a birthday party would have looked like, it made my heart so proud. I feel really proud of people right now because this is hard. This isn't fun, but I believe that people are getting it. God loves us. He sees us. And so we are surely going to continue loving other people and coronavirus cannot stop us. So keep going guys. Good job. Good job. God loves you. God sees you. Let's keep loving other people. Yeah.